Hello and happy uh, Wednesday. Uh, Carmen here. I am going to answer a pretty good question um, that I get asked a lot. So the question is basically how do you successfully do your myofunctional therapy training and start a business um, concurrently? So kind of do them hand in hand. So uh, I So I thought about this and I have one, two, three things that I'm going to talk about, okay? So when I did my training, many of you guys already know this, but I um, started my training in January. I had paying clients by the time I was done with my training and they were that was by May and then in a year I cut back from full-time to part-time and then in another year I retired from hygiene so I clearly had to get my myofunctional therapy education and start my business at the same time so I had a lot of moving parts now full transparency you guys I wasn't raising babies um, my kids were already raised. So while I was an employee and a partner, I, um, I think that there's a distinct difference, obviously, if you've got littles. So the first thing that I recommend you to do with, if you're trying to A, get your myofunctional therapy education, um, whether that through that's one of my, through one of my programs or not, um, if you're trying to do that and start a business at the same time, the first thing that I recommend is that you get it on your calendar and stick with it. Um, some of the outside private coaching that I do, uh, I find that some of you have taken courses a long time ago and basically you're you're only interested at this point. You're only interested in, in having a business. You're only interested in practicing mile. And the reason I say that you're only interested is because there's a huge difference between being interested and being committed, okay? Um, when you're committed, it's like pulling the pin on a grenade, okay? You're you're not just interested in throwing that, you're you're definitely going to follow through with that, okay? So when you get it on your calendar, take into consideration the program, how how much training there is. So for example, um in my trainings in, in the Mile Mastery program, which is 36 lessons to start with, okay? So we won't talk about all the other stuff. So in those 36 lessons, you, um, some of that stuff you don't need right away, okay? Like all of the re reading the research, all of that kind of stuff. You don't need that to start getting your feet wet, but evaluate how much, how long the program is or how many lessons or, you know, just kind of get a rough estimate and then get it on the calendar and stick to it. Um, when I did my program, of course it was broken down, but I stayed on track. So I did the stuff each week, which leads me to item number two, which is to start practicing immediately. One of the first things when I get with a coaching client is, you know, what have you done in the program? What have you already learned and what are you already implementing? And that, um, that's, that's a hard thing because it's hard to start um, making a recipe when you only have half of the ingredients. But the program is written in such a way that it should be a, you should be able to do that. Meaning, at the very beginning, I talk about reviewing um, medical histories. I obviously talk about right out of the gate what an orofacial myofunctional disorder is how you identify it you know what the goals of therapy are that kind of stuff um and so if you start practicing it immediately that means when you've done the lesson on medical histories you should be looking at every medical history okay um, and then the third thing is, is implement as you go. You do not have to be perfect. You just have to get started. And that's part of the reason that I created the implementation or the Ignition Implementation Lab as part of the Myo Mastery Program. And that's because so many of you guys are like, okay, I know what I'm looking for. I know what an OMD is, but what the hell do I do with everything else? I don't know how to organize it and put it into play. So when I created Ignition, it it was really 
uh, based on my journey. So when I took my training and I started my business, I was doing them at the same time. Um, I just kept thinking, okay, if somebody contacted me tomorrow, what do I have to do? What do I have to have in place? Um, many of you guys get caught up in procrastination and that's just really fear. Okay. You're just, you're disguising it as researching it, or you're disguising it as, um, creating letterhead, that kind of stuff, though that doesn't move the needle in your business. You have to get down to the brass tacks of what you need now for somebody to contact you. So that's why I created that program is because I went through that. Nobody gave that to me. Nobody told me what the hell I was supposed to do with all this. I had to figure it out. And so I learned, and that's how what I call the minimum viable program, the minimum things you have to get in place and then you circle back around and work on those so i go over all of that stuff in ignition but going back to what we were talking about today how you can start getting your education how you can start building your business get it on the calendar make a commitment whether you're going to do you know three lessons a week or five lessons a week um I encourage you to just stay current, stay with the material, start working in it, start practicing it. My programs are written so that there is something that you can implement at the end of every lesson. Um, and it will be, you know, like looking at medical histories, start doing comprehensive exams. I answer hundreds of emails each year, you guys, about how, how did you grow your business so big? How did you um, grow it so fast? How has this been so easy for you? Because I've taken other courses. I don't know how to do this. I don't know what foot to put in front of the other. And, and I started immediately, you guys. I didn't know what the whole picture looked like, but I started taking those pieces that I learned um, you know, going back to medical history, I started reviewing medical histories. If somebody had a, a history of sleep apnea, if somebody had been taking a medicine for, you know, acid reflux, so many people have symptoms that they've had for a coon's age that they just don't think anything about it. So I started looking at all of that and I started having a conversation with every single person. And a lot of you guys already know this about me, but I, uh, I was working 12 hour a day, so I was seeing 12 clients a day uh, in hygiene. And so that was 36 sets of ears that got to hear me talk about myofunctional therapy, um, what I was doing, what it was about. Did they have a concern? Did they not? Was everybody concerned or interested in what I had to say? Nope. But guess what? They were a captive audience. So I got to practice which is part of the reason why I speak about it so well and I'm so comfortable is because I practice. So all of the, if you're in hygiene, all of those patients of yours, that's a captive audience and you can practice your skill on their ears, okay? Um, so get it, break it down, get the program broken down, get it on your calendar, okay? Practice immediately and then implement as you go. So if you're in my program, if you're in the Myo Mastery program, that means learn what you have to do for ignition, um, the things you have to have in place. I teach that there's three things I want you to have in place and you should be able to make, be making money. I did not spend all the hours on my website prior to having my first patient. In fact, I don't even know if my website was up. So all of those things in due time, but it's doable. You can do both. You just have to not hide behind fear, not hide behind excuses or procrastination, and just stay committed to yourself and follow your schedule. So um, I hope that's helpful. I will see you um, not next week because I'm going to be uh, on vacation, but the week after and I will answer another question for you. See you then.